right, I'm back here at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. the next day after we listed that campaign, the uh, Keep Calm and Drop Your Gear. It's been about, uh, I guess, 18 hours since we put it up, and we've only sold one, so it doesn't actually look that promising. Like I said in the beginning, I didn't actually, um, I didn't expect it to make any sales, really, <laughs> so I'm surprised it did any. Um, because this is just for an example, like I said in the beginning, I just wanted to show you how to list a shirt and also how to how to uh, list the ad several different ways to uh, just show you how to do it instead of just showing you like a sort of like a bullet point of some uh, PowerPoint presentation or something like that. I learn better by seeing things, so that's why I did that. But unfortunately, it didn't work out for this campaign. So let's just I just want to show you how to analyze the stats and make decisions at this point. So right now, there's only one sale. Um, I can take a look at our bit.ly here and see how many hits we got. We got 72 clicks all together and you can see the traffic over time. We listed at 7 o'clock then right away we got 12 clicks and throughout the night it died down. It always does die down at night and then it picked up again this morning. Now there's one thing that I mentioned in a previous video that I believe is incorrect now. Um, remember I said you want to be listing your campaign late at night around 7 so that all your your um, your budget if you set 25 bucks will be um, consumed by midnight but that's not the case anymore I see that uh, Facebook has changed it a bit and it looks like that when you list a campaign say at 7 o'clock and you set your budget for $25 a day it appeared that Facebook will use that 24 that that $25 for the during the next 24 hours so what that means, if you start at 7 p.m., Facebook is going to use your $25 budget all the way to 7 p.m. the next day, not until midnight. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm not exactly sure if that's the case, but it makes sense because right here they tell you um, how much of the budget is left over. So right now today for this particular campaign here, we're just logged in to my Facebook looking at the two campaigns we created here. But you can see of today um, we spent eight dollars out of twenty five well last night when I posted it at seven at night it said something like you know I think it was this one here eighty two cents of three dollars that was going to be spent meaning they're they're not going to spend all the twenty five dollars at night anymore so in order to get instant traffic and and spend your full budget you actually have to set your campaign as um, you have to set a lifetime budget not an auction style budget. An auction style is paying a set amount per day as opposed to a lifetime budget where you set an end time when you want your campaign to end. And so that's the difference. So let's just go in and take a look here. So looking at this I spent $33 here on this campaign. This one contained uh, three ads and then we can and then this one here was the post engagement. So let's go ahead and take a look at these and see what we can find. So let's go in and check this one out first. This is the one containing, actually, yeah, yeah, we'll do that one first. So here's the three campaigns we created. And right off the bat, I can see that this one is definitely a lot cheaper. <laughs> the first one got 25 clicks. And there's one thing I want to mention here. Um, like this says 25 clicks, 19 clicks, and 6 clicks. How many clicks is that? 25 plus 19 plus 6 equals 50 clicks. I want to see the other one here. If it's going to show the number of clicks. Uh, it's post engagements. It's not going to show website clicks, but it might show clicks. 60 clicks there. No, I guess it won't. Okay, just want to compare it to this number here of 70, 70 clicks. So you can see it's actually pretty close to what what you get out of here. So it's nice to see real time traffic using Bitly. But first off, right now I can tell you this is too expensive, right? And there's no point in running this one because well, it's too expensive as well. So I'll turn that off too. And I do want to see the ads. So if I just click on ads right here, now I can see this the ads and I can compare the conversions as well. So you can see the one that is doing the best here is at 2% uh, click through rate, which actually isn't that good. You know, you want to be over 3%, so it's not really that good. 
and there's only been one comment which is my comment that I put in there and if you let's look at the other ones as well here and we can see this one got eight likes one one share so a little bit more activity on that one because we had more ads running to it that's why but not really that much activity and you know not many sales obviously so to me first off right now I wouldn't even spend any more money on this I don't want to waste any more money I've already put in like like 40 bucks or something like that um, 30 plus the other money it's, a, it's just over $40 so I won't even run these ads anymore but just to see that there is sort of a little bit of potential there if I was going to concentrate on it I would definitely concentrate on this one here but let's go take a look at the other one and not to start from the beginning here this one here the post engagement the first one that we created and let's take a look at the ad well this one got three percent click-through rate much more engagement and three comments they actually got more comments a lot more likes so you can see that the post engagement where you put just a plain shirt and a post on your fan page actually worked the best and that's most likely where I got my sale from so if you look at it that way I spent if it was this one ad um, that got the sale unfortunately the ad didn't register in in here I looked at if you go and view the reports I'll show you that in a minute I'm just guessing it came from this one it may, may have came from one of the other ones but most likely it came from here 3% click-through rate you know if that's the case one sale and I only spent $13 in a sale I get $10 profit so I'm only three dollars behind so ideally I could just keep this running and close the other ones and just scale this one up and to scale one up to scale a campaign up all you have to do is just increase the budget just increase the budget to like I usually go twice the amount so I'd go 50 bucks and I'd set it or I go and then if it get fewer sales or sometimes I'll just put like if I got like three or four sales out of the 25 bucks I'll go like five hundred dollars I really boost it up and get some traffic and uh, see how it goes but uh, you don't want to go too crazy on it like you don't want to go like a thousand or five thousand unless you know it's selling very well like you're getting like double your investment but right now I'm barely I'm not even breaking even on this one and like I already spent lots of money on it and honestly it's not picking it up any traction on this so I would just dump it and just move on to the next one there's no point in losing more money on these campaigns so I'm actually I do want to go in here and show you more about the report so let's just continue looking through here um, nice feature here is I can click on ads that are running and I just want to see active um, you know there's one in my blue leads it's not what I want but these are the two that I just have active right now remember I, I discontinued the other two and I'm getting um, a lot more post engagements so it these are the exact same interests too so um, if we actually go back and look at all those ads um, I actually pulled it into my power editor here as well so to get all this information in power editor you just uh, I brought it up it's going to be different now because I because I um, disabled those two campaigns but that's okay I should be able to see see not two campaigns sorry two ad sets So I'm just going to go in active campaigns. I'm going to select this one. I want to see these two that we created, these two campaigns. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the other one so I get both of them. And I want to select ads so I can see all the ads. There we go. You can see that we turned off a couple ads there, ad sets. I just want to compare the data here. So let's sort by um, average cost per click. And you can see that the one that we did, this was the post engagement one. Get it in view here. This one here was a post engagement one. That one seemed to get the most traction. Got some comments, got some likes, most likes, got some clicks, and CTR was the best. And that was with the um, the in it was no interest. Remember, we just targeted the uh, the job titles. So the job titles was the most um, efficient one, the one that actually brought in the most. And same with the other campaign, which was all uh, clicks to a website you could see that the one with the job titles did the best and the next one was uh, the one with the schools actually and then the final one was the interests so 
that was how we uh, that's how it worked out so with that said it looks like the post engagement stuff would be would be the best one to go for so if I was actually scale this out and if it was if I got a few more sales what I'd end up doing is let's go back to our campaigns here so the one here with, with clicks to website I would just kibosh the whole thing so I just disabled the whole thing there and then this one here would be the one I'd concentrate on and a few ways I like scaling is I can just add more ad sets in here and just do some it's kind of weird but if you just duplicate the same ad set set exactly the same like three times that can boost up the traffic you, it's kind of weird because it sounds like you're just buying you're actually competing with yourself buying the traffic I'm not sure what the phenomenon is I read it somewhere in someone's course and I ended up applying it um, and it works it's, it's an easy way to scale up so I actually scale up by multiplying the ad set just copying it straight over and sometimes it's always a good idea to change up a, one little thing you know and then uh, you can actually use reports too to dial in who's actually doing the clicking which we'll do that in just a second um, what else was I gonna say here oh yeah to scale it up ultimately what I love doing is just increasing the budget like here's the daily budget you can increase it here just click that and change it to 50 I'm not going to because I just don't really want to um, continue with this campaign but let's go back to our reports I want to show you the reports and we'll dig into more of the report stuff so let's hit reports and it will show all the current ones there and I'll just add, add a filter because I know my my campaigns contain the word gear so I'll hit enter and those are the two campaigns and let's see if we hit the edit columns up here we can select conversion and this will tell me whether or not I got any conversions and the one conversion there does not show up so they don't always show up Fortunately, this time it didn't, so I don't know where the conversion came from. But let's say I did know where the conversion came from. And let's say, for example, it came from this one. So what I'd do then is I would, I would dig into the, into the um, reports a little bit further to find what age group that sale came from and was it female or male. And let me show you how to do that. So click Edit Columns here. And what I'll do is I'll hit Demographic. And then I over here I want to add the ad set. So in the right at the top here you have data ag aggregation. So in here I want to select I want to select the checkbox as I'm trying to say ad set and also the ad and then click on actions right here and you want to scroll down to the uh, external URL part section and click on checkouts for conversion and click okay. So now what we're going to see is we're going to see all of the age groups and we're also going to see all of the conversions but unfortunately there's they won't it didn't show up so it's still not there okay now it's it's really splitting everything up a lot here anyhow what you can do now is you can really dig in here and go to for example the um, the, the unique clicks and we could see the age groups that are getting all the clicks. So let's go over here. So it's all, all male. So that's the number one thing I would do. Go back to my campaign and take out the males. So let's actually do that. Like we're going to pretend to scale out this campaign. So I'm going to go back to campaigns here on another page. So I have my reporting beside me here. I guess you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I'm reporting here and I'm going to all my campaigns. I'm going to go into the gear one here. And what I want to be doing is I'm going to modify um, this ad. So I'm just get down to the ad level. And I can edit the targeting here. So if you click edit targeting, I would come in here and set it to men only. And in fact, I should have known that from the beginning. Now look at this, okay. You can see it targets 26,000 people, but there's actually only 2,000 women in there. So I guess it wouldn't make that much difference if we did that. But that would be the first step of what I would do. So I'd go and save this. And then, of course, my ad will go back into review. 
and get uh, reapproved, which usually happens pretty quick. But so that's what I would do first off, because I know it's all male. And then what I could do is I can actually target the the males that are actually uh, clicking. Like what age groups are they clicking? So you can see any. I just kind of look through 18 to 24. Then there's 25 to 34. Um, 25, 34, 35 to 44, 54. So basically, it looks like everyone's clicking up to the age 54. So another thing I would do is I would go back into my ad here, hit the targeting, and tighten up the age group a little bit to uh, 54. So that'd be another thing I would do. That dropped it down to 24,000. So just concentrating on the people actually taking action and clicking. It looks like we got another like in between there. I thought it was only 19. So, so you can see that's what you do when you utilize um, the actual reporting here. You can really dig in and start to narrow down. And the reason I like doing that is because let's say we're I was sitting at like um, you know like 15 or 16 sales or something like that, and my goal is 20 so I want to and I'm just losing a little bit on on my ads so let's say you know I'm, I've spent let's say a hundred and say I spent around 200 bucks right or maybe 180 bucks or something like that and I'm sitting at around 15 16 sales it's like 150 160 bucks because I get ten dollars profit per shirt on average and so you can go in and you can dial in your ads a little bit just like I showed you go into who's clicking and go into who's what age group is clicking as well so find out the gender find out the age and narrow your ad down to that obviously bump out the ads that weren't that didn't have any conversion any high conversions like I did and ultimately if you can see the conversions in here then then you definitely can uh, narrow it down to that group as well like maybe the conversion came from this age group then I'd make a whole separate ad targeted to just that age group so I would go back to the ad summary this one here and I would just copy this exact ad so you can create similar ad right here and then I would narrow down that ad oh we already had our ad approved there I narrow add a separate ad to just that ad group or age group so whatever it was 22 to 24 you know what I mean then I'd list that as well and what that will do that will help narrow down your marketing get back to that okay that'll help kind of dial it in and recoup some of your costs so that means you can and then sometimes I actually make profit not very much maybe like 50 bucks or something like that but you know what 50 bucks is 50 bucks I didn't have right so that's a really good thing to do you want to be using the reports and it's pretty simple to use that's basically how you go through and see if the campaign is winning in this particular case I don't really think of any point of of keeping it going. Like if let's go back to our um, our fan page there, see what kind of activity we got going on. You can see a, someone uh, commented, "I want this for all the wrong reasons," and I said, "Show off your naughty side, Devin," <laughs> and put the link there. I understand, Devin. Don't worry. That's oh, funny. Someone responding to his comment there added another post, but really not much traction there. You know, not really much to to start spending more money with. So anyhow, so what I would do at this point is I just go in here and I would just cancel it. But just for curiosity's sakes, maybe I'll leave it run until this hits 10 bucks and just see if another sale comes through. If it comes through, then you know maybe I can actually make profit. If the first sale came from this, this one here, then it may be able to pull ahead a bit, and I might be able to recoup some of my money that I spent. So I've already spent. Let's see how much I spent total here. So 34, 34 dollars plus nine bucks. I spent 43 dollars, right? But I do have one sale. If I can get it up to 10 sales minimum, then I can get, I can I can request a gold drop and I can get uh, 100 bucks out of this. So that's just something to do. But in all honesty, I, I probably should just stop it. But anyhow, that's it for this video. I just really want to show you how to uh, go about knowing when to stop, what to do when um, 
you look at your stats and also using the reporting to dial in your ads a little bit more to make them come back or even you know get some profit out of them and again I do want to stress the fact that this was just an example I know it's a little um, could be a little bit disappointing given the fact that we didn't make all these sales overnight sort of thing but I just wanted to show you a real live example and how to deal with a campaign after you've um, you see the results